Obviously, the eyes that she is speaking of are the eyes of love, To be willing to see each other as God sees us. Eyes of love that don't judge and make wrong. How beautiful. One of my favorite things is catching people being, living as the Christ. And I see it every time I come onto this campus. I see it, I see it everywhere I go. And in this community that has said, we have said, we are an inclusive community of unconditional love. It is so palpable. I hear it in the words that are spoken between the children and the adults and the adults and the adults. I feel it in the presence. I got to be with the chaplains this morning. I feel it in the presence of those who have said yes to carrying that light and love. Have you said yes to carrying the light and love of God? Raise your hand if you have said yes to carrying the light and love of God. Yes. Thank you, God. Kindness is our virtue today. How perfect. It's always been appropriate. Every virtue we've had, every week, all the, the life flow that has led to each Sunday has been absolutely perfect. And kindness was really where we went with our Wednesday evening healing prayer service as well. The beautiful holding of what is true and what actually sets us free. And today we know that kindness is a God-given blessing in our lives unto itself. And that it is here, moving through us, to give and to receive in myriad ways. And Janine Hedberg is the person who said yes to this virtue speaks to her, and she wants to share about that with you today. So, Janine, yeah. Did you want this? You want that? Can I this Good morning. Thank you so much, Reverend Diane. Um, And just as Dennis said, and and just as Todd said, it is my absolute joy to be up here this morning. And I think we really all know what kindness is. We know what acts of kindness are, whether it's to one of our children or our grandchildren or uh, the person behind us in line at Publix. We all know what acts of kindness are. And to me, kindness is much more than just the acts of kindness. Since we are here to be the eyes and the ears and the feet and the hands of God on earth, that means we're here to be love, to to be love, not to just be loving, but to really be love. And that's not always the easiest thing to do. And I think that it's, it's even one step more than just being. I think that Mark Twain, over a hundred years ago, said it really well. He said, kindness is the language which the deaf can hear and the blind can see. I believe that kindness is a language. Just as we all speak our native language, whether that's English or Spanish or French or or, or Mandarin Chinese, and it's programmed in our brains, I believe that we came onto earth with a, I'll call it a pre-native language. And that's the true language of love, which to me is kindness. I believe it's, it's every kindness that we, we think. When we use kindness as our pre-native language behind everything we say and everything we feel, I believe that kindness is how we express God on earth. And I think the Dalai Lama says it really, really well when he says there's really no need for temples. There's no need for complicated philosophies. My brain and my heart are my temples. My philosophy is kindness. I believe that from the bottom of my heart, and I ask you to join with me. Live and be this language of love, kindness. Thank you. I, this, I love having all the different voices, somebody speaking up every week for a virtue in this place. It's beautiful. In the book of Job twenty two twenty eight, it says, you will also declare a thing 
and it will be established for you. We declare through everything that we do, and you're absolutely right, we are love in action. It's really, you know, God's, the synchronicities of God are consistent and continuous and always present in our lives. Sometimes we capture that and we go, oh, that's so cool. I'm going to tell you what happened this morning. I, I had an outfit laid out to wear, and it had, you know, I was doing the red, white, and blue outfit, so I had red, red, white, and little blue, and I walked in, and I heard at my altar today, sitting in a meditation, that I was to wear white. I walked into the sanctuary, came up to Todd and said, wow, you must have gotten the same memo. He's got a white shirt on, and he said, you know, it's interesting. I was going to wear red. I was going to wear red, but I was told to wear white, and I don't know how that message came through to you. That was, and I turned to Janine, and she has white on as well, and looked at us with these huge eyes and said, I was going to wear red as well. <laughs> you know, what I hear in that is that red is the color that we think of with love, of course. And white is allowing that love to come through us on every level. This is, it's like we're just being called with kindness to be light and to be lightness of being wherever we go and it, through all the different experiences that come before us. This past week, a beautiful soul who's had a great impact on this community, on our greater community, on our world, for holistic healing and health, suddenly left our earth plane. Dr. Teresa Sievers is an encouraging soul, a loving presence, a very um, excited and amazing voice, encouraging each and every one of us to know that body, mind, and spirit, we are informed on every level to be well-being itself, walking at the point of view. And she is a daughter, she's a sister, she's a wife, she's a mother. I ask you today to please simply hold a container in your heart and your mind for whatever is taking place as we just allow the light of God to shine on whatever needs to be shined on. Everything is being revealed at just the right pace. And if you will, hold her family, hold Teresa in light as she moves forward at God's speed. So with your thoughts, with your words, with any actions that you take, I would ask that you simply pray and hold this space of kindness with Teresa because her family and speaking with them to pray and love them, love her, is the very best thing that we can do. In Galatians 6, 9, it says, let us not lose heart in doing good. Because the facts of life and the things that human beings do, you know, we do, can come in and seem to color our world, rock our world. And it says, I remind you, let us not lose heart in doing good. Stay in that place of wholeheartedness. Our founders of this nation declared for us many things, wondrous things, in the Declaration of In dependence, which really is for us an inner dependence on God's presence and power in us, and each one of us being divine beings, tapping into that and living that in our lives. As they declared these things for us, it is not about a single place or people who spoke a certain language in a certain land. It's a template, really, isn't it? It's a template we were given for how we are to treat everyone on an earth plane and beyond. And so listen again to these words, if you will. This is what they declared for us. And what I know with you is our sense of we, our sense of brothers and sisters, is spreading. It's evolving in our hearts and minds now. 
We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men, and what they mean by that is humankind, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed with certain unalienable rights. It means it can't be separated from us. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And so what they're saying to us when we look at the core of that is that no one and nothing can take our God-given rights away from us. And everyone is filled with God-given rights. It's who and what we truly are. And so humankind has been awakening to our own divinity since time immemorial. The consciousness that Jesus bore as the Christ consciousness is the consciousness that you have in you, your hope of glory that Paul spoke of. And yes, we haven't completely accepted it yet in many ways. And yes, we're learning to live more closely, more closely with it. Yes, we have a way to go. We do. We have a way to go. And that way is to live in alignment with that which is within us, that knows how to be kind. I love that you pointed that out, Janine. We all know what kindness is, don't we? Every single one of us. Some of these virtues, it's kind of like, what does that mean in my life? You know, This one? We all know how to do. And we had this declaration in 1776, and yet we didn't really accept that all men were created equal, did we? Many of us have not yet accepted that we are created equal to others. The Emancipation Proclamation was like almost 100 years later. And there continues to be segregation. There still continues to be segregation. Women didn't get the vote for another 150 years. Just layer upon layer, and it wasn't until June 2015 that we, another aspect of our equality, of being all God's children came forward, thank you, God, just happened. These are all signs of the evolving of human kindness, one with the other. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 says, The weapons of our warfare is not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Hear that. The weapons of our warfare. This is speaking to us as spiritual warriors. This is speaking to us as warriors of peace, warriors of love, spiritual emissaries of light, if you will. And that those weapons that we use are really tools, aren't they? They're really spiritual tools. That's what that's saying. And that we are mighty through God, which is spirit itself, coming to all people, and that those spiritual tools must be applied in our lives. The greatest of these is love, Scripture says. And so, yes, kindness is Love in action. But I want to say to you today, I want to ask you to think of it as the world's most, the universe's most, the multiverse's most powerful medicine. Love in action, which means love exchanged through the tiniest little actions of kindness and huge actions of kindness, those that you can see, those that you can't see. It's beautiful because kindness is limitless, It's absolutely free of charge. It's something you can access 24-7, 365 days a week. And even in your dream time, kindness is that light and that love that shines and guides our way, even in the darkest times. Last night, we went to the fireworks and went right down to the pier. And we went next, the people that, are, that we went with are here in the congregation, I see. And I hope you guys don't mind if I mention dear names. Do you mind? Okay, good. I'm looking right at them. <laughs> Do you mind if I, yeah. Uh, so we went to the fireworks um, with Gareth and Jan and Jan's mother, Ruth. And we were astounded by the fireworks. It was wonderful. We saw the fireworks. And when we turned to leave, it was pretty dark. 
There was no light. And we were coming up onto some stairs. And it was the most amazing and wonderful thing. Because I'm telling you, it was a madding crowd. There were a lot of people, and they were really close together. And you know how that can become a pushing force? You know, it's like, whoa, we're going forward. Let's get out of here. You know, whoa. Let me tell you what happened. Ruth was being walked ever so lovingly between Gareth and Jan. And I'm telling you, a man that we don't know and never seen came up beside them and sat and held a space for them and started appreciating and encouraging Ruth and saying, oh my gosh, you guys have no pressure here whatsoever. You just take your time and started going, look at that. That's wonderful. Look at you. And every step you took, Ruth, was illuminated, literally, there's a young man on the other side who took out his cell phone, turned on the flashlight, and there were other lights that came on, and they all lit that space. Did you feel that? The light of God surrounded you in that moment so that your footfall was sure and steady. It was kindness personified. You and I are here to be like that with a light touch, literally, of kindness. Because what it does is it opens the way for the infinite good that is within us to come forward, to come through, and it is miraculous because it is circular. When you, following the golden rule, move in that way, the next thing you see is the same toward you, and it's like that. The giving and the receiving. It invites contagious generosity. And contagious generosity is a reference you hear from this place. It's not just speaking of generosity in terms of material things. Contagious generosity is a generosity of heart. It's a generosity that puts others in the same category you put yourself, God first. And it honors that divinity within others and just like, Wow. And in that place, we are amazed. Now, Jesus gave us this as scripture. And this scripture is, it's been tough to live according to. For each and every one of us, but listen to it again in light of kindness, Luke 6, 27, 31. Love your enemies. Do good for those who hate you or persecute you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. If someone strikes you on one cheek, turn to him the other also. If someone takes your cloak, do not stop him from taking your tunic. Give to everyone who asks you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Can you imagine our world, your world, your world without kindness? If it weren't for kindness, we wouldn't even take the time to listen to each other. We'd be so full of ourselves and our own agenda and oh, what it is that we have on our to-do list that we wouldn't even notice that someone needs a little space, a little encouragement, some light, just a hand to move from point A to point B in whatever it is that's before them. Without kindness, we wouldn't care what happens to the water on our earth plane. We wouldn't be doing the things that we are now doing to remember that truth. And it's just having a huge effect. What's beautiful is we know how to do this. We know how to be kind. If someone is here in unity for the very first time, and there are several people here for the very first time, when they're walking out of this place, you may see a look of, wow, what's going on in this place? And if you saw that, would you not walk up to them and say, welcome? Of course you would. Can I help you? Can I show you around? Let's take a walk. If someone was being bullied, would you, could you not stand at least in that space, in prayer, holding space, and perhaps even step in as an emissary of light and love? 
If you were angry, you were angry. Could you not decide to just stop and breathe and remember God and then go forward and decide otherwise? Of course you can. In the Bible it says whatever, whatever, whatever is kind. Whatever is noble. Whatever is admirable. Whatever, whatever is pure. Whatever is loving. And where does it begin? We could all put our hands on our hearts, couldn't we? It begins with me. It begins with you. And somehow as human beings, in the course of learning to be good, you and I have all wrestled with a false dilemma. And I just want to say it is a false dilemma that we, this dilemma is either shall I be kind to myself or shall I be kind to others? That is, this is not an either or place. This is a this and a that. It's an inclusive environment. As you do to others, you do to yourself. So the truth is, being kind to yourself is a prerequisite for being kind to others. Mother Teresa said it this way, let no one ever come to you without leaving better and happier. Be the living expression of God's kindness, kindness in your face, kindness in your eyes, kindness in your smile, kindness in your warm greeting. So I believe what's happening is that we are being given this fabulous opportunity. And it's happening everywhere. Not just in this country. It's happening worldwide, globally, and locally. We're being given this opportunity to broaden and to spiritualize our understanding of what we means. Our understanding of community. It is not just a prescribed space or a certain paradigm, a certain way of praying or a certain way of being or a certain place to serve. It's that we're being called to do this everywhere we go. With whom? With each and every child of God. With each and every form of life itself. Confucius' grandson, Menke, Mencius, as he's referred to, as a student of um, Zisi. It was Zisi, actually, who was his grandson. And Mencius said this, Just as water unobstructed will flow downhill, we, given the chance to be what we are, will extend ourselves in kindness. Let us live up to that. And this week, allow yourself to feel quickened. I I'm going to just do this. May you feel quickened in body, mind, and spirit. May every cell, fiber, and tissue of you, the invisibility of you, and that which is visible, Begin to just move at the speed of kindness toward yourself, toward others, as a representative, literally a representative of the divine, as we go forward this day in kindness, one with the other. God bless you.